The word bandit is now a household name in Nigeria. The country is losing, or lo losing count of loss of lives, property destroyed due to banditry. Every part of the country from the north to the south is feeling the heat of the scourge. From attacks on innocent civilians and communities to kidnapping for ransom and other related criminalities, no tribe, religion, or political affiliation is spared. Banditry has held Nigeria hostage. The federal government has been on its toes to curb the terror on, on its citizens with kinetic and non-kinetic measures. Yet, the menace continues. Some affected states like Benue, Ekiti, Taraba, and Zamfara, amongst others, have initiated legislations as a way out. A few days ago, Zamfara State Governor signed the prohibition and punishment for banditry, cattle rustling, cultism, kidnapping, and other incidental offenses 2022 Act. The law proposes death penalty for those found guilty of banditry, kidnappings, and other related offenses. Governor Belo Matawale is hoping the act will enable the state to fight the nagging insecurity and banditry that has ravaged its locals. But the question is, will this finally be the missing tool that will nip this heinous act in the bud? What are the implications and other steps that can be taken to combat banditry in Nigeria? These and more will be our focus on the program Nigeria Today. Hello and welcome. I am Lydia Odijochi. Thank you for joining us. With me in the studio is a lawyer and human rights activist, Ahmed Abubakar Tanimo. Thank you for having me. It's Welcome to the program. Being here. Okay. Thank you so much. And also with us is a security expert, Wing Commander Musa Retired Salmanu. Nice to have you once again. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for having me today. All right. Now, let me start with the lawyer. You see, so much has been coming from uh, Zamfara State. Same week, the state governor spoke about residents acquiring guns to defend themselves. And he again signed the law into act. That's the death penalty. How would you react this, to, to this development? Um, my reaction is simple. There are two parallels. At the same time, we are setting up the machinery for coming up the banditry. And because now it has gone beyond um, banditry the way we used to know. And thank God we have laws and um, judicial pronouncement. Is they, they actually are supposed to be described as terrorists. Okay. Bandits in the, in the Nigerian context, the way we have it now, they are nothing more than terrorists yes. and they should be described as such. Uh, the conflicting um, situation that we have, laws on its own are not uh, obeyed unless if you have the mechanism for implementing. Okay. The state can make all the laws in the world, but making laws will not ensure that what you contemplate before you make those laws will be taken care of. In the case of um, banditry, the way we have it now, which involves or uh, encompasses kidnapping, cattle rustling, killings, ransacking of um, uh, communities, law on its own cannot help the situation. If you have made those law, who will implement those law? Who will arrest the bandits? Are we talking about the security personnel? How many of them can you find in those areas? It's not my purview, but we know as a matter of fact, is when you are in court mm -hmm. that the instrumentality of law will come into play. But before going to court, you have a lot of processes. There's need for arrest, there's need for investigation, mm -hmm. who will provide those information. 
of uh, late we've seen what in those villages because if you look at the ratio of our police officers and now the ability to come in from time to time to intervene the ratio is the proportion is what we need to focus in because focus on because the law on its own will only become operative when they are taken to court what happened before the time that they approach the okay. court so the law will not solve it and the call for people to be armed they, 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 they can make such kind of um, comment and it stops at comment because even those that have license we know how it works it's mm. very few and they are more sophisticated unless you want to exactly. turn the country into a war zone exactly. okay now uh wing commander banditry has been on on the rise every day we hear tales of these uh, criminalities in the country why is the country struggling so hard to nip this or end this or end this so uh, there are a lot of factors but uh, some or a few of them is the fact that um, uh, typical of us we allow problems to to blossom to become big before we attempt or even look at them uh, the issue of banditry is not uh, is not is not something that just happened to us all of a sudden it didn't come overnight it was there people knew it was happening but it was in remote villages and um, people uh, there is this always this feeling that it if it doesn't hit me then it doesn't uh, uh, exist it's not there it's not a problem yet uh, so it in this remote villages um, it uh, continued it first started on and people virtually did nothing because they felt they were remote or far away from that problem now it's become something that it's everywhere because people that have done it mm -hmm. uh, I keep saying is the ability to get away with it when crime is committed when people uh, go against the law and they know that there is no punishment they know that there is no uh, nobody takes them to or they are not held accountable mm -hmm. then there's that propensity to in continue to, to to behave that way mm -hmm. for bad behavior there is no consequence for bad behavior and so when that happens uh, it becomes that uh, it outgrows the capacity of the state to manage. Um, if you look at it, the, it the, the state is not contemplating except in total breakdown of law and order where you have all these happening at the same time. So it's something that just um, we slept on it mm. and it took so long. And now that we are beginning to realize that it's a problem to everyone, uh, then we are kind of doing a fire brigade approach, mm. sometimes uncoordinated. Um, uh, responses and ineffective responses that cannot even tackle the issue so and the perpetrators are out there they have studied the situation they know what happens and incidents happen everybody um, says that um, they condemn it they you know all sort of uh, talks it's okay. but it stops there um, nobody is held accountable nobody is brought to book nobody is brought to like uh, my uh, colleague here uh, my friend here said um, you don't even get them to the courts and by the, when you get them or the process of getting them to the courts you find out that we are boggled so many things along the way mm -hmm. so until we are able to get back to uh, those processes whereby people are held accountable we have to start from somewhere uh, yes it might seem that it's so much it's so whatever but let's start. let's start whoever goes against the law in respective of who he is or where he or she is let them be held accountable let there be examples let us be seen or let it be seen that the state is capable of managing first the space and the citizens within that state uh, the space and to ensure that uh, the state will go after you if you do something or you go against the law of the land okay now let me let me come back to you you see the kinetic and non-kinetic approaches that have been employed all this while have not really yielded much now probably some other states may want to tow the path of Zanfra state governor how do you see this legislation that is uh, being made to actually um, what do I use now okay, yes it's yes it's sanction yes so this sanction yes, to it, yes. Uh, before now we have gamuts of so many laws Okay. If you can think of any offense, I assure you there are a lot of laws that will tackle such kind of um, offenses, such kind of crime before 
even being committed. It can be that the punishment will not be that severe. But uh, the severity of um, sanction has not always been um, the deterring factor for those who will be criminal. Mm -hmm. You could fix death penalty, but if the chances of them getting away with it, there's a 50-50 chances, some would rather do it than to... Now, now look at, when we are looking at the other factors, as I said, law on its own will not be enough to cope the insecurity that we are having. There are other challenges. The economy reality of the day, a lot of people are passing through difficult times. Mm. If you come to even the city centers, those in Abuja, in Kaduna, in Lagos, how are they faring? They look at the rate of inflation, go to the market. So if cost of living in even in city centers are that uh, very, very difficult, now you now start imagining what obtains in the rural areas. Then we've had history of abuses. The system, as I said, is not about having corpus, corpus of law that you expect that because there is a law, every state is forming various laws, it will tackle the problem. No, there must be systematic approach towards engaging and enforcing that law. A law will remain at best what is in the books, but when you implement, mm -hmm. it will now send the necessary message. You serve as a deterrent to those who will be uh, uh, bandits. bandits. It will serve as a form of a reform or a punishment to those who have already perpetrated it. But if you are not allowing even the previous law to operate, we have so many laws on battery, on stealing, on theft, on both. So all those previous ones, have they functioned to their optimal? No. If you are making new laws, what are the machineries that you are putting in place? People talk about state police and the rest. We encourage it. The truth of the matter is that you will not wait for the federal government to now come and tell you go and create state police. You are allowed to have vigilantes. You are allowed to have community-based approach towards tackling insecurity. But I assure you, now you now look at the ones we are struggling to deal with are the small fish. We all yes. know that there are big fishes you know, that are sponsoring it. Mm -hmm. Little has been done about um, financing of terrorism. We have inflow coming in from various, the financial sectors, there are, these are interrelated angles. What uh, my fellow guest speaker analyst said is that you need to take it from a very holistic approach. You are talking of the kinetic, the non-kinetic, using the oper operationality of law. But if you are not having a synergy of bringing all this into a concerted mm -hmm. effort, whereby everybody is playing a role, you are making the judiciary to be effective. The security agencies are enabling them to okay. be able to perform their work optimally. The local uh, community, you are looking at what they are doing, the heads, the traditional rulers, mm -hmm. and you are looking at who are the ultimate beneficiary of all this crime. When you follow the trade, you will be able to cover it significantly. Okay. Now, let me, let me come to you. As uh, a security expert, now, how would you react to this? The president had at the time called on governors mm -hmm. to do more in tackling insecurity in their own domains. How much can they do to put an end to banditry? Honestly, they can do a lot. Um, I, I keep saying that the solution to every problem lies with the people closest to that problem. Mm. Uh, so the solution to the insecurity that we have lies with the communities, lies with uh, the states, and so on. It's, it's a level of responsibility up to the federal level and the international community. Mm -hmm. Now, um, talking about states or governors doing more, Yes, they have to go beyond coming on cameras to pronounce uh, laws uh, and that are not... You have, when you bring up law, you have to look at how do you implement, how do you in, uh, in, uh, intend to enforce it, do you have the capacity for that enforcement and so on. People talk about uh, uh, state police as uh, the panacea for everything, or like the silver bullet and so on. Mm -hmm. But uh, we already, in, in reality, we have something similar to state police. Okay. Uh, we have, um, uh, we have, uh, for example, Amote Kun, we have uh, in various states, talking about my state, for example, we have the Kaduna Vigilante, uh, uh, Vigilante Service. Okay. Uh, you, have, uh, you have even the uh, Kaduna Castelia is called road traffic and so on. You have, very, you have hunters, you have all these associations that are doing community policing. Now, it's not just have them and the, the optics or kind of like, yeah, we have this on board and so on. But how do you, one, put uh, machinery that this 
outfits can work properly? Okay. Do you train them? Do we equip them? Do you encourage communities? And when I say equip, equipping, uh, there is this feeling that all we, when we talk about equipment, the firearms. Fire. No, firearms are not. They are the last, that's the last resort, resource, Carol. Okay. How do you involve the community? I think it's communities that are affected by this um, have the capacity, if we, if properly utilized, to bring, if not complete an end to it, but to reduce to the, the frequency, minimum. the barest minimum okay. uh, that of All this. Right. It's time to go for a break, to feel the pulse of some members of the public on the death penalty before we return to continue with the conversation. Stay with us. I think it's a welcome idea because the issue of this bank entry has been a very serious problem. As you can see right now, our railway stations are no more functioning. You understand? Transportation is a very big challenge now. The price for airlines now have increased. So to me, it's a welcome idea. Support the opinion. That is one of the parameters that we are government supposed to use to reduce some of those things. It will discourage those that are doing it. But by the time if they arrest them, they will now prosecute them. At the end of the day, they will not even do anything. And all some of those big men will now come and be bailing them. So they, it's, it's, it's encouraging. But by the time if they are killing them, you don't need to be told that this thing is not something that one can do. So some of them said, I'm in support. I'm full support, 100%, that whosoever that is being caught, that person should be killed. They welcome development because, um, you know, what has been happening in the country, we have had a, a, you know, a political situation whereby these guys are arrested and then after some time they will say a phone call came from above that they should be released. So honestly speaking, it's a welcome development, you understand, that once they are arrested and identified as the culprits, they should be executed immediately. Somebody have killed and uh, it's ascertained that the person have killed. The person should also have to pay for the crime. I'm in support of it. In the long run, I believe all this killing, kidnapping, and it will stop. Of a warning to a lot of youth who may also want to go into the, to the bad business. Welcome back. Still with me is Ahmed Aubakar Tanimu, a lawyer and human rights activist, and Wing Commander Musa Salman retired. He's also a security expert. Now, let me come uh, to you. We have had situations where state governments have taken some counter measures only for the federal government to counter what they have already put in place, like the position of the Zamfara state uh, government on citizens' rights to acquire arms to defend self. How much is this affecting the war on terror? It's affecting it negatively in the sense that, as we have uh, elaborated earlier, there is a need for synergy between the state and the federal government, between government at all levels. Mm -hmm. And because we, the constitution, the way we operate it, there are certain items that are on exclusive list, concurrent list, and the challenge that we are having does not care about the categorization of cat categorization of where a particular item belongs. Mm -hmm. Insecurity is a challenge. It bedevils the entirety of all Nigerians. We are in Abuja today. We are affected with what is happening in Zamfara because if you are sent on a mission to go and conduct interview in some of the local government in Zamfara. I assure you, some of your colleagues would rather choose to resign their appointment <laughs> than to go, because they see it as a dead sentence. So the fear, the panic is already there. So if there is no that synergy, state government should work. They have council of state, council of whatever, and they sit on a daily, on, for, on a frequent basis. They should be able to come together. If you have, um, in fact, if they make these laws, some of these laws and some of these measures they are implementing, a federal thing, for me, I support death penalty. For me, I support limited licensing of guns to uh, some citizens mm -hmm. when the background check has been done, people that of means, people that have attained certain educational qualification, mm -hmm. their mental status have been checked. 
if all those conditions and they have a body like the regulation, they try to attempt to have a committee to regulate um, uh, firearms. If we could have something like that that is functional, then I assure you the rate of criminality will be reduced. But without the necessary synergy between the state, the local government, and the federal government, and all these um, laws, measures being implemented, we only go as far as wish and thinking but not in reality as some people are saying death penalty it doesn't mean that once they are caught immediately they know that will amount to jungle justice they need to be taken to court they need to before going to court they need to be investigated they tried before conviction and they have appellate room so we need to do a whole comprehensive work to see that okay if we have an objective we want instantaneous justice we can equally make it to be part of the law okay. then the means to implement it equally should okay. be taken care of yes another thing i was that just crossed my mind while he was speaking was the issue of the cost of these firearms how many people can actually afford them well the issue of firearms uh, for me um i think like he said there are already provisions on how to go about um firearms uh, and the caliber mm -hmm. and the velocity of those firearms mm -hmm. and who can even own a firearm and so on mm -hmm. and what are the situations when um you know so it's already there uh when we talk about issues of firearms it's not something new the nigerian state has envisaged that has seen that and has legislated mm -hmm. that I know there's a bill in the National Assembly, yeah. uh, I don't know if it's in the second or third uh, reading by now, that about the issue of firearms and so So it's a raging um, issue. Mm -hmm. However, for me personally, um, I feel that um, the firearms that we're talking about will not have the capacity to stop this uh, uh, terrorist because, yes, they are declared terrorists already. Um, because when you look at firearms, those guys have military-grade firearms the velocity and the you know the, <clears throat> the what those firearms can do they are military grade now if you have what we have in our legislature that can be accepted then you can yes you can have number of people having them so it might it's just like during the uh the conquest the colonial conquest mm. when we had thousands or if not tens or hundreds of thousands of our horsemen with uh you know the traditional means of uh, fight uh, and yet they were not with just one magazine gun you were able to they were able to finish thousands mm -hmm. so if these guys come with military grade weapons and you have a den gun or so on mm. it will not solve the problem however for me personally what i would think is that we could have community control of firearms okay what do i mean by this we could because we have seen that the the security um, the security agencies, they are overstretched, they are everywhere, and the capacity to respond effectively uh, has, is, is uh, not there or is diminished. So what we can do is uh, we have trusted communities with certain responsibilities. We can also experiment or legislate and put into uh, existence mechanisms that can ensure that communities can hold in trust some kind of armory communities, okay. uh, uh, community armory, okay. whereby weapons could be kept uh, protected in okay. a way in that a when there is, yes, and people right. are trained from that community, like where we do the, uh, uh, the, the guards in, in, uh, in our various areas and so on. If you remember, we give them sticks, we give them all these things, mm. and entrust the community security or protection in their hands. Okay. What we can do is to upgrade what we can give them, train them, ensure that there is oversight uh, over what they do and so that if there is they are the first line of response mm -hmm. while we call for back off from uh, the uh, state security apparatus all right well i'm getting the sign to wind up the program that's the much we can take on the program we really thank you for your contributions well we've been uh, talking to the wing commander retired Musa Salmano, and also a security expert. Thank you. Thank you for having me. For your contributions. And also, we appreciate you. I'm an Abraka a lawyer and human rights activist. We appreciate your contributions and your thoughts. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And to our viewer back home, we thank you so much for always tuning in. You can watch this and other episodes of the program at www.youtube.com slash NTA News 24 Hub. We thank you for watching. 
I am Lydia Odijochi. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.